So hey y'all, uh, it's your girl Brianna Chatees and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Talking Spit. This guy that I have here, I've been dying to talk to. I've known him for 20 years. That is a long time. And uh, watching what transpired in the news, I really wanted to sit down and talk to him and allow people to get a uh, full gist of who he is, what he's about. He's a phenomenal black man, y'all. When I say phenomenal, y'all will hear more. Um, but introduce yourself to the people. Let them know who you are, what you're doing, all those great things. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I am Donald uh, Wayne Williams II. Uh, a lot of people uh, know me in the neighborhood really as just uh, you know either athlete or a father. Uh, a little bit more light on myself is uh, becoming with the George Floyd situation. Uh, really, uh, me, I'm just a laid back person that comes from a big family uh, and really just focusing on my kids and my business and the entrepreneur world and help, you know, always looking to help people and give back. Okay, so you said a lot, which is great. So, who yeah. is Donald Williams? If you were to ask someone to sit and have a conversation, you're like, what would you want to be known for? Well, really, what I'd be known for is really first, you know, being a father. You know what I mean? Most people know me for when I move, my kids move, or wherever I go, I'm usually with my kids or running for my kids now, you know, because they're really busy in their lives. So, uh, me is just being a, a trying father, you know what I mean? Most people should know me as a trying father. And then outside of that, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, I, I'm a go-getter, and I try to create different ways and opportunities for myself and family. Okay. So let's get into like some background about you. Like I know how you grew up because we grew up a little rough. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Northside Minneapolis wasn't it wasn't that great. Northside, we outside by the way. Right, yeah. um, what was life like growing up for you? Like what would be a typical day for Donald Williams? Yeah, typical day, man. On the North Side is really just uh, I was uh, I actually grew up uh, um, kind of all over North Minneapolis, but uh, as my preteens, I grew up in the forties. So you know. Um, most of my friends were down, you know, in the lows or, you know, in the thirties and things like that. So I used to always have to like literally get up, get my bike ready <laughs> to actually ride down and go actually find kids in the neighborhood that was, you know, uh, willing to play and, you know, have fun. So, uh, more of that, that's what it was. We'd get together with some friends, we'd either be playing football somewhere or we'd be riding bikes throughout the neighborhood or playing baseball, you know, at North Commons. Uh, I would either bounce from North Commons or Farview Park. Uh, as I was growing up, so. Shout out to Farview. Farview's the reason why I'm here, yeah, okay? Listen, right, right. <laughs> listen y'all got to bring that back for kids, by the way. Yeah. All those different programs we have, they don't have those. Don't have right but now. let's share some light, right? I knew you, and I know you as who you are as a human being and an individual, but the world knows you as because what transpired with that public lynching of George Floyd, Correct. right? And so witnessing that as a, as a person from the outside, it was hard. Like, how was that? Was, what... How did you possess the strength that you had to not only sit there, but each actually just speak up and be able to create this movement that changed the world, if you ask me? Yeah, like, honestly, I, it really starts with my parents, my, my mom and my father. Really, it helped me uh, really just gain strength as a kid, you know, and uh, they really never, like... They showed us never to give up on things in life. They always showed us to push forward no matter what it was. If it's any different roadblocks in life, just could keep pushing forward, you know. My mom's from the south side of Chicago, and then I have a dad that's from Illinois, suburbs, but you know what I mean? He's a militant family, you know, three generations of militant on one side of the family, but my dad, and then, you know, just hard working, uh, family oriented, uh, you know, I mean, striving for greatness pretty much on, on my mom's side of the family, you know, we're, we're all different, unique. So with both of them put together, they gave me the strength to be able to deal with this. And then uh, also with Miss Martial Arts, you know what I mean, and wrestling and things like that, it helps me with uh, being able to control my composure in situations, you know, just uh, being able to uh, have the whole scenario slow down for me and actually see it for what it actually was, you know, which was a murder. So. It's like those skills that you possess, a natural, a normal human being don't have. Yeah. And so how do you feel that that can help others be able to be in a position that you're in and be able to display the composure that you have? Like that strength is impossible. Like it's, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Like me personally, I couldn't. No, definitely. And, uh, you know, it's just like we're wrestling, you know. Um, you know, let's just go back to everybody wants to be a basketball player, 
Michael Jordan or, you know what I'm saying, LeBron James or things like that, you know? I was one of those kids. I wanted to be like V. Cole, which is my cousin, you know what I'm saying? He's like one of the best basketball players coming up. So I was like always trying, trying to be a basketball player. But then, like, I found something different for me. It was like, well, you can't be a basketball player. I found wrestling. Then, you know, with wrestling, it actually helped me determine or helped me be a better person in life and controlling my outer space of life. So being in the real world as a black man, you know, uh, wrestling mm-hmm. actually helped me be like more control, more more mature, more in control of my thoughts, more in control of my actions. Because when you're in a mat by yourself, it's just you and then it's that person. You're wrestling against that person. You can't find no way out. You can't make no excuses. You can't, you know, run the other way. You can't ask your mom for, you know, a nipple to help you out. You know, you had to actually sit there and wrestle with that person and figure it out. So mentally it gave me the strength to, you know, just endure a lot of things that I build with as a black man and, you know, wrestling and martial arts has, and my family has helped me with that a lot. Wow. That's the, listen, maybe I should go back and wrestle. You think I could be a good wrestler? I mean, I'm big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they got girl wrestlers. <laughs> they got girl wrestlers. Yeah, it's huge right now. <laughs> and so like, I feel, I hear this common theme of like, when, as you're talking, it's like standing up for what's right, right? And having the composure. Like, why is that important to you? Like, why is that something that you want to like, not only tell your children about, or just the world, just say, you know, sometimes you can't just stand there. You actually got to interject and speak up. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, as people, we've been oppressed for over hundreds, 250 plus years, you know, and um, back then they were speaking up in their own different ways. They had their own different uh, rituals, how they were speaking up or communicating with each other, you know, and if we learn to get that back as the generation that we're in, able to speak to each other when we see a situation or observe it before we jump into it, you know what I mean, and just, you know, work on unifying each other, you know, that's really what it's about, you know, like, like, I care for everybody. It doesn't matter white, black, purple, or green. You know what I'm saying? If I see something's wrong and it's not right, I'm going to speak on it. You know, right. and we were always grow- you know I mean? we was growing up to, you know, speak on what's right. You know what I mean? If you think about it, the drug, the, uh, what is it, McGruff, the drug McGruff guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, if you see someone doing drugs, <laughs> tell on his ass. You know what I'm <laughs> I'm one of those kids. I'm an 80s kid. I seen this damn dog. The dog said, hey, man, you ain't supposed to do drugs. You see people say drug. You you, you tell him his ass. Okay, you say, crack no, is whack. Yeah, you okay. know, crack is whack. So we grew up in those areas. Right. So it's like, why not, you know, teach these kids, like, when you see something wrong, like, tell him their ass. Like, bro, he just he just stole something or, you know, this person doing something wrong with the police or whatnot. You know, tell him their ass, you know. Like, don't just allow it to keep happening, you know. Different situations in the city that's going on that shouldn't go on. You know what shouldn't go on? It ain't really telling. It's trying to get a solution or fixing a problem. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not really telling. It's a solution. Like, let's find out the problem is and get a solution for it. But see, that takes a certain level of courage, right? Like, you can have strength. Everyone <laughs> feels that they're strong. Yeah. Like, you have courage. Now, granted, I think we possess that same level of courage. Yeah. That's why I've been in more handcuffs than I'm supposed to be. Yeah. My mouth don't shut off. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. So yeah, it's like, yeah. how do you have that courage to be like, you know what? It's wrong. I don't care what you're doing. I'm going to say something. I mean, again, like... Growing up as a black man in America, you know what I'm saying? We got treated wrong for so many different things, you know, just being a north side kid walking down the street and getting a uh, mistaken identity for this guy that robbed a store. And it's like, bro, I'm only 12 years old. You know I'm only 12 years old, you know, or, you know, just getting pulled over over north multiple times in one day where it's like, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you, you're trying to get me to do something right. wrong, you know what I mean? You're just fishing for something wrong, you know what I mean? But, I, like, that gave me the courage, really. A lot of stuff that I've been through as a black man that I don't speak on with the police, with the school system, with, you know what I mean, just being a father in, in America, you know what I mean? It, it gave me the strength to be able to speak on what's wrong because, like, right. some of the stuff that I deal with is because of the color of my skin and it's, and it's wrong as fuck. So, like, yes. if ain't nobody else before me going to speak on this, and which some have, and we know, it, you know, and then it's some that will bite their tongue on it. My parents, my father, my family never raised me on biting my tongue. So, if, you know, I just speak on what's right, and, you know, and that's just who I am. <laughs> you know, and I appreciate that, because I ain't going to lie. A lot of people, I'm not going to say it's cowardly, but I think a lot of people are afraid of the outcome when they are speaking up for stuff. Yeah. And so, like, now we're getting to the point that everyone's really, really curious on, like, how the George Floyd tragedy changed your life. I know I was. And I really want to know, like, how have you been, A, coping, and what's changed from that moment sitting on 38th in Chicago? Yeah, it, uh, I just want to say, you know, really before I ask that, 
you know, George Floyd, you know, we don't know each other, but I mean, he's a king just shine light on, you know, my life and what I'm doing in, in the world and, you know, what I've been doing as a young man, you know what I mean? It was just passed down from another king that actually put light on it. Like, oh, this dude's actually doing what, what he's saying he's doing, you know? So, you know, as much as he lost his life, I commend him for actually giving a light on, on my life, you know? Uh, has, my life has changed <laughs> tremendously a little bit more. Uh, more of it is the people like actually like being outside, knowing and seeing people. You know, people recognize me a lot more. I wish it was for the MMA reasons, but it's for the change of the world. You know, and um, so you know, I do a lot of my business stuff is outside. So I do get a lot more people uh, coming to me, uh, speaking to me, uh, wondering if that's actually me. You know, and, and it is, you know, it's me. When you guys see me out here, yeah, most people that see me out here see me working. You know what I mean? They see me running my business. They see me with my kids, you know what I mean? They see me out here doing something right in the community. The majority of the people would be shocked by, like, holy shit, like, this is actually a dude that's actually saying what he's saying. And actually like, you're doing actually doing what, doing what you're saying. saying. Yeah, doing what I'm saying, yeah. you know? And uh, so that changed a lot, a lot of it, you know, um, just having a light on my life, you know? And I'm humble with it because I, you know, I didn't follow national TV before and, and things like that. So that, that helps out. Um, so like, how are you coping with it? Like the mental strain, right? It took me a while to kind of not get back to normal, yeah. right? But to feel like I can have a conversation without breaking down about this. Like you not only lived it physically by seeing it, you also were there, right? And then you had to continue it on when it came to the trial. Like, how are you doing? I'm doing good, you know what I mean? Like I said, um, it's tough. Not a normal person deal with it, be able to deal with it, you know. Um, the ancestors, you know, like my mentor King Rick said, you know, they chose me for this, you know. Um, and and uh, I'm just wearing it as the best way I can and be humble about it. You know, it's tough. Uh, it's not easy. And, um, you know, it has, you know, caused some controversy and stuff in my life, you know. And it's just about, you know, really being a man of adjustments and being able to adjust from this and being able to move forward from this, you know? So that's what I'm working on okay, right now. Okay, so what's next? Moving forward, all right, what's next for you? <laughs> Tell us more about Guns Down, Bells On, because that's something that I was, it was super dope to read about, and I didn't really understand it that well. Yeah. So let us know, what's next? What are you working on? How are you taking all of this negativity and turning it into something positive? Yeah, so like I said, uh, the king gave light on my on my life and what I was already in the process of doing. Um, I do have a nonprofit uh, program it's called Gun Down Belt On. Uh, what that is is just you know there you got you got the guns and then you got your images. You know I want to be able to t teach the kids uh, in our community about gun violence, gun safety, being able to teach them how to use a gun, being able to uh, show them different. Uh, alternatives of self-defense outside of a gun, you know, and then you have uh, the the belt on part. The belt on part is about your actual first image and yeah. impression. You know, your first ten to thirty seconds. It kind of gives a demeanor on who you are as a person. So I want to be able to show our kids that even when you do go on interviews and things like that, that you know, have your pants up, you know, to your belt. Just put a belt on. You just spend like two, three hundred dollars on your outfit. You know, you just need a belt on. To make yourself be a little bit resentable, you know what I mean? Or if you're going into an interview, you know, and, you know, you're looking really swaggy, but, you know, one thing you're probably missing it from saving you get the job is, boom, your belt or making sure your sh shirt tucked in or your tie just fixed up a little bit like that, you know? Um, just learning, teaching them the uh, interviewing skills, you know, because for me, a lot of my speaking skills come from being able to go through mock interviews yeah. and being in a step up program and, you know, internship with Target Corporation and Best Buy and things like that. I was able to endure all of that and take it in as a sponge. And then I was able to be Absolutely. able to use it as, a, uh, as an entrepreneur now that I'm doing, you know. So my whole thing of it is kind of imitate what I went through with the step up programs and all the programs that we had when we were growing up. Step you know up. what I mean? <laughs> it's like now they... It's just letting the kids down. So, it's, you know, with this trauma part, I'm taking it and I'm like, look, let me show you how to interview with these people. Let me show you how to do gun safety. Let me show you how to, you know what I mean, dress to not impress, but dress to, you know, have a little bit more understanding of who you are, not being a thug. So when they first see you, you know, your pants down, the first image they get is like, hey, man, that man's a thug, you know. You know, when people see me, they still think that I'm a thug or, so you know. So what you do like, combat that, right? Like you, they're, you're teaching all these babies these yeah. skills, which are phenomenal. Like, how are you helping them be prepared for 
life. life. And that's what, <laughs> that's what the nonprofit program is for. I mean, the, the guns down both on. We want to, we're having to have programs that's going to implement this. Like I said, working on just uh, wrestling programs, working on just uh, different uh, interviewing skills. And my program now with Team Williams, my Team Williams outside of non. Guns down for uh, belt time. My team Williams uh, business, like we're hiring youth for uh, yeah. youth to work with my lawn service. We're hiring youth to work with my uh, with the scooters and things like that. Uh, so we can show them and you know give them a different outlook of what is portrayed in the uh, world. I'm not gonna let you kind of kind of glance over your businesses. This man <laughs> just named about three or four businesses, and you just kind of. What other businesses outside of your nonprofit do you have going on? Cause you talking about they gonna work with this this. What are you doing? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, like, uh, this kind of, so I've always been having things in the background with me being in the gym, so for the last, like, five or six years, I was building my book of business for my snow company, uh, which is called Team Williams uh, Snow uh, Snow Service, LLC, and uh, we just pretty much, first we just doing winter stuff, so yeah. we have just all snow removal businesses, from business to residential side. And then uh, this year we kind of branched out to more of the landscaping and uh, uh, yard cutting and things like that. And then uh, on the other side of that, I have a retail uh, business where I sell flip pallets. So right. I literally uh, shout out to Ashley on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> no, the girl said, if you spend money, you get resources. So I spent $25. I learned how to uh, buy pallets from Amazon, Target, things like that. And I flip them on my W's Price is Right. Uh, website and uh, Instagram page right. and my spots, uh, Boss Moss page uh, and then also to uh, uh, Smart Move Fitness and Smart Move Media we do different uh, give, do different things with Premier Boxing at the Armory. Uh, we help out with different kids program at Northside Boxing and do all their media work and different uh, football programs like Farview and uh, the Minnesota Chiefs and things like that. So I pretty much got my hands pretty much in almost Everything. 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 You know, That's just, what it is. You got your hands in everything. Yeah, I'm trying. To. Okay. Listen, I'm not mad at it. All right. So it seems like you understand the importance of generational wealth. You got 75 businesses. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> and some nonprofits going on as well. Yeah. Uh, what is the importance of building generational wealth for your babies? Because you got kids. Yeah. Building generational wealth for kids is really huge. It's, it closes the generational gap that we have with between the, you know, the white and the brown people from you know the blacks and latinos right. and everything you know like our gap is huge it's over 100 plus years of gap you know right that's just like you know most of it is it's like making sure you protect yourself having life insurance you know that most of the people most of our people don't have life insurance so when your parents pass away or you know someone has don't a go find me it's doing too much yeah. if you ask me go find me is it's cool but it's not, not the it's not a life insurance policy like, yeah you can pull, you can have multiple uh, insurance policy where you have one that's for your, your, your death benefits and you have one that you're pulling off from later down the line. You're using that to invest into your businesses or, you know, your kids going to college, you know, you use that first half to pay for their school, you know. So the generational wealth part is just protecting ourselves, creating business, creating banks, creating our own way of, of opportunities, you know, and actually being able to give that to our kids, having our own house, right. having ownership of generational wealth. That's what to me with generational wealth is, you know, uh, the Caucasian or whites or whatever you want to say, they have it mapped out on how they do it. You know, oh, what I mean? 100%. They have a savings account for their kids. They're giving, they're giving their kids to 24 years old to stay in the house. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? They're, they're, they're uh, investing in their kids. You know what I mean? It's like when our kids get 18, 19, 20 years old, they have to figure out how to get in school, how to do their uh, financial aid stuff and all that things work. We should be helping them out because that creates generational wealth. In the, generation of wealth in the very beginning. Yeah. That is so key what you just said in regards to generational wealth because I think a lot of times we're just taught to how to save. Yeah. But savings don't do that much. You no. wave, it's so many layers to finances, yeah. in my opinion. Right. You got the stock market, you got crypto. Uh, you know, those are layers. Those are ways for us to catch up on generational wealth, especially with crypto right now. Like if you're not in crypto, yeah, it's going down. But if you're not in that, that's almost like the next wave. Oh, I don't know who crypto what? is, Brianna. Yeah. Set a note to remind yourself. <laughs> I don't know who crypto is. Yeah. Okay, so look up crypto, y'all. Yeah, really. All right. So you could have chose anybody to have this conversation. I was like, I don't know, maybe because you know you had history way, 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 way back in the day with my sister. She kind of she cute. She ain't cute. She was just playing. But why? <laughs> why did you not choose major like media platforms to be able to tell your story and? Paint the picture of who you want to marry, who you are. 
Well, because, you know, I control, we control the narrative to this story in ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So I want to be able to, to let the people know the truth and be able to speak on who I am or what I went through without being uh, hushed or quiet, you know what I mean? Or being in the courtroom and they just shut the TV off, you know, things like that. I want to be able to speak on things like that, you know, if I say the wrong thing. And with you, like, I've been mean, knowing you, I've been mean, watching you grow up, you know what I mean? And uh, I've been mean, watching your movement, watching how you grow in your business. And I felt like this was the best thing for me to do, is do something with, do it with someone that I know. Someone that I could be able to speak on, speak without having to be hushed, and you know, have a good platform. So, right. uh, and like I said, we've been knowing each other for twenty plus years. Why not do it with you? Right. You know what I mean? And you've been working, working your ass off for. You know, years. I try. <laughs> I have you been know, trying. Like stuff, right? I have been trying. Yeah. If there is some last things that you would say to anyone that's watching this, um, to just kind of get an idea of who you are, what you got going on next, that needs some encouragement, what would you say to them? Yeah, I, you know what I mean, on the encouragement part first, I'll just say always, you know what I mean, strive for greatness, you know what I mean, always uh, stay positive on, on everything, you know, and it's always light at the end of the tunnel. And it's people around you that are successful that you don't know they're successful, but if you watch it, the way that they move will give you motivation, you know, me with my family, me being in the gym watching, you know, Rob Rose, Pat Berry, Nick Lynn, Sean Shirt, people like those gave me influences right. to be able to move forward, you know what I mean? And, um, uh, I, I just say always, if you see something wrong with your people, you know what I mean, your black and brown people in the community, they pull it over or, you know, they're going through some type of struggle or anything, just take a second and just stop and observe to make sure right. that they're okay. You know what I mean? Because if no one else protects us, we have to protect ourselves. You know what I'm saying? 100%. And if no one unites, you know, with us, we have to unite with ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And like we're too black, too strong, too beat to not, you know, that's what it is. Man, that's a shirt. That part. <laughs> too, too strong, strong to too be denied. denied. Oh my god. That part. This, this song. This yes, was phenomenal. Like this was phenomenal. And I pray that everything that you wanted to get out of this, everything that you wanted to say, um, even if you want to come back and say a part two, you know what, Bree, yeah. I should talk about this. I am so appreciative of you being here. Um, y'all, this was great for me. I don't know about y'all. Yeah. Even though I know so many different things about you prior, just yeah. knowing why. For one, God chose you for this moment. Because yeah. There's not a lot of people that can be able to do what you did and with such grace. Yeah. And so, y'all, if you have any questions for this man, all his social media would be in the description box. Um, it would be in the info box. His nonprofit link is going to be up for you guys to donate. Tell them more information about that, sir. Yes, definitely. So, with the nonprofit program, our whole thing right now with the Guns Down Belt Zone part is to be able to create a community center for the kids, to be able to create opportunity at the community center where we have multiple resources and programs in one sources for the kids. And uh, you could be able to uh, donate, uh, be able to donate uh, at Guns Down Belt Zone uh, Cash App. And then we'll have our PayPal and everything up like that here shortly too. Like you said, all the descriptions will be in the bottom of that. Yep. And check out Brianna, she's dope, bro. I mean, get on her podcast. Let's all push black and beautiful, black and strong. You know what I mean? We can't be denied. I mix those with this good. Listen, it was dope. Listen, y'all, all of the information that you need will be there. Make sure you donate. One thing that is missing in this generation is they do not have as many programs as the programs that Donald and I had. There ain't no fast summer in Minnesota no more. Pal doesn't even exist. <laughs> we had, I didn't see police officers be bad until I became an adult. That's yeah. the crazy part. But y'all, if y'all have any questions, Know that y'all can always reach out. Find him on all social media platforms. And always, peace, love, happiness, and success. And I will talk to y'all later. Bye.